Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial on how to present data using tables and charts. The purpose of this tutorial is to show how large data sets can be understood more easily. Take a look at these letter grades. Even though there are only 30 grades here, it's hard to tell how many students got an A or a B or even an F at first glance. You need to look at the letter grades very closely to get any sense of what the grade distribution looks like. And this is for just 30 students. Imagine if we had 300 students to look at. This tutorial will show you how to create a frequency distribution and some graphs to help us to present the data in a more meaningful way. We will also look at how Excel can be used to create these tables and charts. A frequency distribution is a summary table in which the data are arranged into non-overlapping categories or class groupings. Here is a frequency distribution for the 30 student grades. Now the data starts to make some sense. Let's look at the data more closely. We can see that two students received an A for their grade, two students received an A minus, four got a B plus, and so on. Since the sample size was 30, the total frequency counts must add up to 30. So these numbers, 2, 2, 4, 6, 3, and so on, are called frequency counts. And this type of data is often referred to as count data. Let's compare the original data set with this frequency table. Here we have the original data. And here is the data summarized in a frequency table. You can see how much easier it is to understand the data when it is presented in a tabular format than just listing of the grades but the data is still difficult to read because there are so many categories. This is where art meets science in statistics. The science of statistics tells us how to create a frequency distribution table mathematically, but to, to make the table more interesting and more easy to comprehend, we need to think about how the data can be presented in a more pleasing way. For this data, I think consolidating all the A grades, whether they're A or A minus into one category, and consolidating the Bs, whether they are plus or minus, into one B category would make this table easier to look at. In other words, let's get rid of all the pluses and minuses and collapse the table from nine categories into just five. Here you can see the collapsed data. On the left are the original grades with all the pluses and minuses, and on the right you can see that I consolidated all the grades and collapsed them into just five grade categories. A, B, C, D, and F. Isn't that easier to read? Yes, but it does come with a cost. We lose the finer detail in the distribution of the grades. You only know now that four people received an A, but you don't know how many got an A and how many got an A minus. So you have to decide whether the data should be collapsed for easier readability or whether you want to keep the original nine categories for accuracy and greater detail. Now remember the frequency distribution that we just looked at gives us the count for each of the categories, but sometimes it is more useful to know the proportion or the percentage of observations in each category. For example, while it's interesting to know that four students received an A, it might be more helpful to know what proportion or percentage of the class that number is. To calculate the relative frequency of each category, we divide the frequency count of each class by n, the sample size. So the formula is relative frequency of a class is equal to frequency of the class divided by n. This relative frequency will give us the proportion instead of the frequency count. We can turn that relative frequency number or proportion into a percentage. To get the percent frequency of each class, we just multiply the relative frequency by 100, or move the decimal place over two spaces. So for our example of 30 students, there were four students who received an A, so the relative frequency for that grade of A would be 4 divided by 30, or 0.1333. That number is a proportion. To convert this to a percentage, we just multiply, multiply the 0.133 3 by 100, and we get 13.33%. Here is a table that shows 
the frequency, the relative frequency, and the percentage frequency distributions for the 30 students. We can see the five categories of grades listed here, and then we have three columns of numbers shown. The first contains the frequency counts, the second shows the relative frequencies, and the third shows the percent frequencies of each grade category. Notice how the table has a title and each column has a header, grades, frequency, relative frequency, and percent frequency. Also, it is important that the frequency column adds up to the sample size of 30. The relative frequency column adds up to 1, and the percent frequency column adds up to 100%. Excel has a pivot tools table to make the construction of a frequency distribution quick and easy. Let's see how this is done for the sample of 30 grades. Here are the steps that are needed to construct a frequency distribution using Excel. Step one, you select any cell in the data set. Step two, click insert. Step three, click recommended pivot tables. And step four, click OK. You'll get a new sheet at the bottom. You can click on the tab, and then you can see the new frequency table embedded in that new sheet. All right, let's take a look at how this actually is done using Excel. If you need these steps again, you can just pause this video and copy down the steps. Okay, so here we have an Excel spreadsheet with the student grades. We have 30 grades here. I'm going to select all the grades. Okay, so we have them all selected. Now all we do is click the tab up here where it says insert. And you can see the choices in this tables group. We have table, recommended pivot table, pivot table. So just to make this simple for the first time, we're going to click on recommended pivot table. Click on that. And up comes a preview. If you look at the preview and you like what you see, you click OK. All right. At the bottom here, we can see the tab. Sheet 1 was the original data. Uh, it would then say sheet 2. Mine says sheet 5 because I was doing some other things with this data. So it And I deleted it, but it still adds uh, the sheet to sheet 5. I could, of course, rename that um, just by clicking rename and call it something else. No need to do that right now. And so we have here the frequency distribution table exactly the same way as constructing it by hand, but a lot easier when it's done by uh, Excel by the computer. Okay, so that was how we used Excel to construct a frequency distribution. Someone once said, a picture is worth a thousand words, and that certainly is true in statistics. If we take the data from a long list or even from a summary table like the one we just created and show it as a graph instead, it becomes much easier to understand, especially for non-quantitative people. One way to present categorical data graphically is to use what is called a bar chart to show the data and to summarize the distribution. On one of the axes of the graph, we will give a label for the classes or categories we use, and on the other axis, we will label the scale that we're using, either frequency counts, here we have frequency counts, relative frequency counts, or percentages. This one has frequency counts. Uh, down here, it says grades. You can't see it. The slide got cut off. Uh, so down below here, it says grades. And on top here, it says frequency counts for student grades. You should always have a title to all of your graphs. So there are three components every graph should have. One is the title, and then the X and Y axes should be labeled. And as I said, uh, this says frequency counts, and this does say grades. Underneath the B minus here, it says grades, but you can't see it because it got cut off on this, uh, on this slide. Sorry about that. All right, so this is a bar chart. Uh, for the distribution of grades before I collapse the data. And you can see there are nine bars and one of the one one for each grade category. A, A minus, B plus, B, B minus, and so on. So we have nine different bars. Uh, here's the same data, except here I collapse the data and I got rid of the pluses and the minuses, and we have only five categories. I also uh, jazz this up a little bit, I change the colors. And um, I also put the numbers in each of the bars, so you can see 4, 13, 9, 2, 2. And it just makes the bar chart a little easier to read, a little easier to understand. Remember I said a picture is worth a thousand words, right? So you can take a look at this picture, and you can see the highest category is B. All right, over here we have D. 
uh, that's the lowest bar and F also has the lowest bar with two frequency counts each. So as you can see, there are many creative ways to display a bar chart. You can play around with different formats until you're happy with it. What you need to keep in mind is who your audience is. When you create a graph, if the graph is meant for young children or teenagers, you might want to use bold or flashy colors or even animation or cartoons to keep the kids engaged while they're studying. Or on the other hand, if the graph is meant for executives or corporate types, you want to present the graph with more detail and suppress any urges to add cartoons or an animation as hard as that might be because you want to keep your presentation on a professional level. Another tool we have for graphically displaying data is a pie chart. Here's an example of a pie chart for our grade data using both frequencies and percent. To construct a pie chart accurately by hand, you would first draw a circle. We know that a circle has 360 degrees, right? So the first category is a grade of A, and it had a relative frequency of 0.1333, or 13.33%. So if we multiply 360 degrees by that first relative frequency, 0.1333, we get 47.98 degrees. OK, so that's out of the 360 degrees, 47.98, or let's round it to 48 degrees, would be marked off the 360 degrees, and you'd have to use a protractor to do that. So you take a protractor, you mark off 48 degrees, and then you would get your first wedge, and that would be the 13% here, that would be marked as A, four people is the frequency count, and that would be 13% of the 360 degrees. And you would do that for each of these uh, categories A, B, C, D, and F. Uh, luckily, we have tools that do this for us. Uh, there are many charting tools, but let's take a look and see how we could do this using Excel. So here are the uh, steps that you would take. Uh, just like we had a recommended pivots uh, table tool, we have a recommended charts tool. Uh, that we can use and it's very very easy to use all we have to do is click on insert recommended charts and okay and then we would go into the chart on the tab and we would click on the title and the elements and the axes and we would change those so that um, it says student grades and it says frequencies so let's take a look at how this is done okay let's click and select the range of grades so we have the grades here Okay, and now we click on insert. And remember before we clicked on recommended pivot table, now we go over here and click on recommended charts. Okay, let's take a look at what they suggest. And these are the charts that they suggest here. All right, let's click okay. Okay, uh, now we can go to this plus sign here. This is the charts element. Uh, we can look at the axis, the titles, and we can change the titles. We can decide which titles should be displayed. And you can see uh, here we have axis titles. Let's put the axis titles there. Okay, so now we have the axis titles. And you can actually click on them, and you can type in grades. Okay, and then you can click on this one here and type in frequency counts. Okay, and it already has a title count of grades because that's what I had labeled that category. Now I can also get a pie chart. Let's take a look at the insert tab here. Click on that. All right, up here we have charts. And this would be a pie chart. This would be a scatter, say a scatter or a bubble chart. So let's click on the pie chart and we can see the choices we have here. We have 2D three-dimensional pie, a donut pie. Um, the 3D pie looks really cool, right? Uh, the problem is it's not that easy to read because the wedges as they're going back into three dimensions aren't so clear. Uh, so even though it looks nice, it has more pizzazz, um, the 2D pie, pie, which is uh, more boring, is actually more practical for business sense because it's easier to read um, 
easier to read and understand. Okay, so you can play around with that. Uh, there's a lot to play around with, again, with the elements, the data labels that you're going to put in there. Anything you want, you can even change the colors. There's a lot of thing, things you can do. Okay, so that this is how you would create a pie chart using Excel. Again, we have the instructions here. If you want to copy down these instructions, press pause. All right, so this concludes the video on presenting categorical data using tables and charts. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what we learned in this video. First, we learned how to summarize data using a frequency distribution. Then we discussed changing the frequency counts to either proportions or percentages using a relative frequency distribution. We saw how that can easily be done using Excel, right? And finally, we discussed presenting data using graphs and looked at the two most commonly used graphs, a bar chart and a pie chart. These were also demonstrated in Excel. So remember what we learned here in this video applies to categorical data, that is data that is not numerical. In the next video in the series, we'll discuss quantitative data, that is numerical data that can be and how it can be analyzed and presented. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I hope you learned something.